Hi, John. Welcome to today's podcast. Um, I want to go ahead and provide you with the platform to introduce yourself. So if you will, please state your first and last name and tell us a little bit about where you went to undergrad and law school to begin with. Yes. So uh, thank you, Marisol, for having me. Uh, my name is John Kernizan. As some of you may know, I'm on the board of Journey to Esquire. Uh, I went to undergrad in South Florida at Nova Southeastern University, where I studied business administration. Um, after that, I went to law school at St. Thomas University School of Law. Um, I graduated um, not that long ago, in 2020. So, uh, you know, for any law students that are out there watching, I was in your shoes literally a year and a half ago. So, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to, you know, have this platform to help out anyway. Thank you for being here. So now um, to back up a little bit, I, you know, I'm obviously also on the Journey to Esquire board, but tell us what made you join the board? Yeah, so uh, when I was in law school, I had, I mean, so much help. I mean, I, I coming into law school, I didn't have a single lawyer in, in my network aside from a couple uh, professors from undergrad that were lawyers. But aside from that, I mean, come from a family from zero lawyers, anything even remotely close. So, um, but when I got to law school, I, I was surprised at how many attorneys that were currently practicing were so willing to help out, reach out, and you know just be so proactive with their mentorship. So I, I always made it a promise to myself um, that I would get involved somehow, some way to help law students when I got to this point. Um, so then long story short, when I moved to Tampa from South Florida, um, I learned about Journey to Esquire from a coworker or who she was pre previously on the board as well. And, um, yeah, I, I read about the program and I was like, yeah, that's definitely something I want to get involved with and pay it forward. So here we are. Excellent. I agree. So what made you go to law school? Yeah, so I, <laughs> I'd be lying to you if I told you that, uh, you know, when I was three, I knew I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, didn't quite work like that. Uh, I actually kind of figured it out in when I was an undergrad. Uh, I mean, I was studying business, but then all the law, co law courses just happened to be my favorite. I took constitutional law and I loved it. Took business law, which everyone hates, but I loved it. So I started kind of looking into the profession and uh, yeah, just, it just kind of worked out that way. But, yeah. Okay. So then how was the OCI process? You know, how was it landing your first job just for those that are still in law school, still mm -hmm. in law schools, trying to figure out where they're going to work, what they're going to mm -hmm. do. Tell us a little bit about your process. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, that was honestly the most, probably the most stressful part while I was in law school was figuring out. Not the bar? Well, I, I thought, you know, I was like, I'm going to put that stress off until I get to it. And definitely got, but I didn't stress about the bar until I absolutely had to. Uh, but job hunting was, yeah, I mean, I did a lot of networking. I, I, I was all in on that. Um, any networking events, I was there. Um, I was super involved with different organizations at school, whether it was law review or trial team, anything like that, just to, you know, meet people, learn about different practices of the law and uh, but ultimately how I got my job out of law school was um, there is this job fair called the Southeastern Minority Job Fair that everyone that you know as a law student should probably look into um, it's a big job fair that they host out of Atlanta it's um, a lot of big law firms uh, there's some public sector stuff too and yeah it's just all these firms looking for, you know, different kinds of diversity on their firms. They're prioritizing it and they're, they go to that job fair specifically to look for uh, minority and diverse students. So um, yeah, I interviewed through that program and that's how I landed uh, my first job out of law school. So I was lucky. Um, I came into, I was in my 3L year when I got the job. So that took a little bit of stress off of it. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, I personally remember that process and that that was a lot. So I agree with you on the stress. So I'm glad it all worked out, you yeah. know, for the both of us. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more about where you work, what you do. Are you transactional litigation? Yeah. So 
now I'm doing uh, personal injury. So uh, mostly pre-suit stuff. So I'm not litigating. Uh, I was doing that before. I don't frankly miss it that much. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, it's great. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm before this I was doing defense. So now I'm I'm getting to advocate for the people that you know were injured either in car accidents or slip and falls, whatever the case may be, um, and just kind of guiding them from through the process from the very beginning of their claim um, all the way through, you know, the medical treatment and, uh, you know, filing a claim, deciding whether to take a case to litigation. So it's uh, very hands-on. I'm learning a ton from the senior attorneys here. and it's been, it's been great. So that's a good point and a good segue to my next question that I think is beneficial to a lot of attorneys. Um, you just said you were learning from your senior, senior partner. So how important is mentorship when you enter the profession? I mean, that's everything because I know, you know, coming out of law school, everybody's telling you, you don't know anything and you feel like you do because you studied, you know, six books this thick for the bar exam. So you're like, I know everything about everything. When you, when you come out, it, it's really shocking. It's a lot how much you don't know. I mean, you, you sometimes you're given the simplest task and you're, clueless and, 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 and you know you'll get it back red line it's like you completely missed the mark so um, I think the first point I want to make is the first year of practice is hard it's stressful it's tough but hang in there it, it, it'll get better um, it's okay not to know things don't pretend to know things Just, you know make sure that you ask a lot of questions and you know if you don't know then, then you don't know and it's fine uh, but going back to your question of mentorship, I mean, it's, it's everything. I mean, I think, um, you know, I've been lucky to throughout my short career to be surrounded by mentors that, you know, I can always just knock on the door and ask a question or send a text and an email. And I think for young attorneys, that's very important. It's very important for uh, those mentors and supervisors to kind of have that open door policy. And it's important, obviously, for the young associate to, you know, put the ego aside and, and, you know, ask the questions and try to get it right, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I 100% agree with you on everything you said. And I know the first year you were saying that it's hard, but, you know, I think the second, the third, the fourth <laughs> year are all difficult because you're always learning. But a good mentor of mine told me that by the seventh year, you should be somewhat okay. Um, and at least by the fifth year, have a solid understanding, but until the seventh year, you know, still, still takes a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I agree with you. Mentorship is certainly so important. Mm -hmm. And so I know that you have a busy job, you're a young attorney, but you're also on the board. So tell me a little bit more about the organizations you're in and then how you're able to balance work and, you know, kind of volunteering in the legal community. Yeah. So I think uh, balance is a, it's a funny word. I mean, we, we always hear Thank about, <laughs> we always hear about, you know, work-life balance and, and stuff like that. I, I, I don't think it's a balance. I think it's about, you have to prioritize, right? So, I mean, I think um, I'm not there yet, but I think, you know, when you get to a certain stage in life, then other things become priority. And, uh, you know, like I interviewed um, someone last week who, you know, her priority was now her family. So she took a step back completely from the practice of law. Right now, my, my priority, and you know, makes it a little easier, but my wife's priority, or both of our priorities are our professional careers. Um, you know, we, we make time for each other, of course, but we have we don't have any kids or anything like that. So we uh, we focus a lot on work and it, and it's great for now. I don't think there's a perfect balance. I mean, some some weekends you're gonna lose sleep or you're gonna lose a weekend. Um, and, and it is what it is. You just have to, you know, the things that are important to you or that you prioritize, those are the things that are, you know, you're going to have time for. So me, um, you know, I've prioritized, you know, helping out, volunteering. Uh, so I make it a priority to make a little bit of time to do that. But to say it doesn't take away from work or, or whatever, it's, it's, it, it always is. Um, so it's, uh, it's important to just figure out what your priorities are and don't be ashamed by them. I mean, you know, be very upfront about them. And yeah, I mean, the, the whole purpose of this thing is to find happiness. So do the things that make you happy and uh, everything else will work itself out. Right. 
So aside from the Journey to Esquire board, what else are you involved in in the community? Yeah, so, um, well, before I'm not doing it anymore, but I was involved in Big Brothers, Big Sisters, which is a great program. I, I recommend everybody at least has one stint of that. It's, it's, it's really eye-opening and very rewarding. Um, I'm still very involved with our school's trial team. So sometimes I'll go back and I'll be a guest judge for, for, for a mock trial. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So things like that. But yeah, I mean, priority number one right now, it's, it's definitely work. It's, it's for sure. Oh, I, I agree. <laughs> We're both in our offices. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm a young lawyer as well, but since I'm interviewing you, what is good advice that you would give, you know, a law student entering the profession? Yeah, so um, I, I think it's to, let's see, how do I put this the best? Don't, don't be afraid to sometimes take a risk or take a job that you don't think you're gonna like the subject matter, or you don't think, you know, like there's, you're never gonna hit the lottery. You're never gonna be able to play the lottery knowing the numbers, right? So um, it's okay to sometimes, you know, take a job that you're iffy about or, or this and that, because uh, you will always get something out of it, right? So, um, and, and also don't focus so much in, and what kind of law you want to practice. Also focus on like work culture. I think that's so important. Um, when, you're, when you're interviewing for a job, try to ask people around, you know, what's the culture like, what are people like? Uh, because I, I mean, I think that makes just as big of a difference as actually, you know, what you're practicing, the subject matter of the documents that you're typing. I think, you know, the camaraderie and, and the people that you interact with and talk to every day, I think that's, just as important, if not more. Oh, I agree. I have mentees and I always tell them, hey, I know you're going to a job interview or OCIs and mm -hmm. I know they'll be interviewing you, but please also interview them because you want to make sure that not only are they a good fit for you, but that you are also a good fit for them because presumably you're going to be working with them. And, you know, as you know, I'm sure you understand we work long hours. So it's important to have, you know, an excellent work culture, like you said, the camaraderie to have people you get along with, you can yeah. bounce off ideas. And most importantly, a culture that reinforces mentorship, because as a young lawyer, it's so important to involve, to evolve, and to make sure that, you know, we learn as we go, and we have people that we can seek out for guidance, advice, and all of that. So 100%. I agree with you. And, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm happy you mentioned that, because I, I, I want to say that I think the best interviews I've, I've had are because are in jobs that I come in very skeptical, right? In the sense of like, now I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions. And I think to the interviewer, it shows interest. It shows that you're you know, actually taking it seriously and you're thinking outside of, you know, what's the, what's the day of an associate look like? And like, you're, you're now asking like in-depth questions. So I think, yeah, like interviewing the interviewer, and not obviously you're not going to grill them and cross-examine them, but, uh, okay. you know, you got to get answers to, to certain questions if you're going to invest, you know, 50, 60 hours in a, in a place a week, you have to know you're making the right choice. But on that same token, you know, sometimes beggars can't be choosers. And I know sometimes out of law school, you don't have, you know, choices and you just try to get in somewhere. And that's fine, too. It's so much easier to get a job once you have a job. So uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, leave, leave. If, if you're unhappy at a place after one year or six months, or three months, leave. It's OK. I know, you know, recruiters will tell you, no, terrible. You can't jump jobs. Your mental health is way more important than all that stuff. So um, definitely do what's best for you. But don't be afraid to take that job if you absolutely have. Right. I agree. And it's so funny you mentioned that because I was just giving one of my best friends that same advice literally probably a couple hours ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's very important. Happiness is number one. And also, like we just said a few minutes ago where we work, you know, that's essentially our second home, sometimes mm -hmm. our first home. So we want to make sure we're happy and we fit in. Um, so I did notice that on your board questionnaire, you mentioned a uh, big law. And I know when I was in law school, I hear big law. I mean, I, I certainly work at a big firm, but 
you hear, you know, bad things or good things, or the money is great, but the hours are long. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you don't hear a lot about billable hours. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. So tell me how you define big law. And if you have had any experience, you know, yeah. working at a big law firm. Yeah. So my, my first job out of law school was at a big law firm. Um, and listen, it, 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 everything has its pros and cons, right? So pros, I mean, I had a great office with a big old window, and, you know, great view and all, and all that great stuff. And honestly, the, the resources of a big firm are, you know, they're unmatchable. Like, I mean, they literally, you know, you, they, they have so many resources there for you, whether it's mentorship or like, you know, when, when within the practice of law, like they have different departments to support attorneys. So the, the, there are pros, um, cons are, you know, you're usually billing. Um, and some people have mastered it. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, you know, it, and, and I think it really just depends. I mean, I, I know people that have done their entire careers in big law and they're perfectly happy and they have kids and they're married and they're, they live the life. And then I know some people that have hated it or they're like, I would never, I would never want to bill. I never want to work at a big law firm. You know, I, I think it's, you have to try it out and, and, and see if it's for you. Uh, but it's not, you know, it has its pros and cons. It's, it's, it's not heaven and it's not hell. You know, it's somewhere in between. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I have law students that reach out all the time. And, you know, some of them have offers from big firms and they're so excited because the pay is great. And I say, listen, try it out. You may like it or you may hate it. But when you have a job, as you mentioned earlier, it's easier to find a job. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's worth a shot. I'm still, you know, myself, I'm still trying to master billable hours. So, um, mm-hmm. I don't hate them that much, (laughs) but I'm learning to love them. So I understand that. And one of the other questions that stood out to me, or one of the boxes that you checked rather, says, um, talks about veteran and active duty military. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit more about why you checked that box off? Yeah. So uh, before I went to undergrad, I I did four years in the United States Navy. Um, And I think. uh, Thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's the practice of law and military service are like day and night. You know, they're like the, the most complete opposite things. And what I mean is that, you know, the military tends to be very structured. You're asked to be at, here at this time. Uh, you're asked to do A, B and C. You're told when you can go to lunch and when you can go home. You know, it's, it's very structured. We're, the practice of law, though it may seem very structured, we, I mean, we have a lot of rules, we have a lot of regulations um, overseeing us. It's really, it, it, it doesn't really work that way. I mean, there isn't like a structure on how to manage a case or, I mean, there might be rough, as to, like, like rough things on get it from point A to point B, but it's, 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 it's not as clear cut. So I think uh, for any veterans out there um, that might be struggling with that, I, Trust me, I, I totally get it. Um, it you kind of have to adapt to, you know, just kind of making your own way, you know, and, and, and you know, you're you're now calling the shots and you're now telling, um, dictating, you know, to your client or, or not dictating, but you're now calling the shots on how to, you know, get to point A to point B. And it's never gonna be the same for this case and that case. So it's it it is it is so difficult coming from that kind of mindset to, to a field that's so dependent on you and your creativity and your thinking outside the box. That's not skills that, you know, you get from the military. So it's, it's definitely, it's definitely been an adjustment. Uh, but there are things that are transferable, right? I mean, you're going to be, you're always going to be on time. You're going to be diligent, you're going to follow instructions. So that those kind of things are, are, are definitely, uh, you know, you can't teach them. So just the fact that you come in already with those, you're going to be okay as an employee. But as a lawyer, you kind of have to like expand your mind and your creativity for sure. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. And so I'm looking at the time and I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know we only have a limited amount, but I wanted to close off by asking you, you know, what is a fun fact about you? Oh, fun fact. Let's see. There are many. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> No, let's see. So what if someone uh, no one knows or that they would be surprised to learn about you? Let's see. I, I have been to 
14 different countries in the last in the last decade. So um, and I'm almost 30 now. So yeah, my 20s have been oh, wow. very, very good to me. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's incredible. Is that just because of the military? Military got me hooked. And then after, you know, I've just been, we've been traveling like crazy. I mean, obviously pre-COVID, uh, right. you know, cruises help, you know, build up the number for sure. But yeah, uh, yeah no, we, we love traveling. We love uh, you know, eating different foods and, yeah, you know, just getting out there, which I definitely miss right now. <laughs> so I lied. I, one more question. What's yeah. the favorite, what's your favorite place that you've gone to? Jamaica, for sure. Yeah, oh, I've yeah. never gone, but I've heard great things. Okay, the, vibe, yeah. the vibe there is amazing. The food is amazing. The people are amazing. It's, it's a beautiful country. I, I want to go back. I want to do like two weeks there with no cell phone. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, the goal. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I hope you can do that. And again, you know, I know we both serve on the board, so I'm happy that, you know, you're on the board. And I just want to thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. So I hope you have, you know, a wonderful rest of your day. Thank Don't you. Don't work too hard. <laughs> Can't promise that. <laughs>